and let us all that we can to build a better future. All right. We have to talk about what's happening in Washington, D.C. in regards to the um, leaker of the recent documents of the Pentagon. Now, everyone's been talking about it. Everyone's been very, very suspicious about how this whole thing has played out. Now, I want to play a video, two videos of Glenn Greenwald addressing this. And what is happening with our mainstream media, especially outlets like the New York Times and the Washington Post. So again, shout out to Glenn Greenwald, award-winning journalist Glenn Greenwald, who has done phenomenal work, something that TYT wishes they could do. So let's play this video. Times, the Washington Post, instead of protecting sources, which is the role of journalists, instead has led the way to hunting down this source, to hunting down the leaker, to digging in an investigative way to find out who this leaker is and hand that information over to the FBI. They're, they're handmaidens now of the FBI. It's, I've never seen anything like it before. As journalists, we're supposed to rely on leaks. That's what we need and use in order. Now, hold on. I, I will keep my pausing to a minimum on this one because um, and I'm going to rewind it, too, because you need to hear this. Look, the whole idea of journalism is to hold those in power accountable. People who abuse power, people who hurt innocent people, people who are corrupt need to always be held accountable. And unfortunately, unfortunately, the downfall of our media, journalism here in America, democracy, started decades ago, starting with Ronnie Boy Reagan, Bush Sr., and the finally, and finally that switch was turned on by none other than Bill Clinton with the 1996 Telecoms Act. I know there were policies that Reagan and Bush Sr. did, but a lot of things got pushed under Bill Clinton, a Democrat, where all our media was being bought up by corporations. And journalism effectively became a tool of the establishment, which is unfortunate. Because when you have outlets like the New York Times and Washington Post, being the, well, microphone for the establishment, the speakers for the establishment, to have access to those in power. What's their purpose then? We're going to do our reporting. The I Hold on, let me rewind it a little bit. There you go. The FBI. It's I've never seen anything like it before. As journalists, we're supposed to rely on leaks. That's what we need and use in order to do our reporting. The idea that a journalist would be the one to actually go and find out who this leaker is and then reveal it publicly to the FBI is something that, honestly, I didn't even think I would see, notwithstanding that there are a few people who hold, hold them in greater contempt than I do. I watched all day today as not a single journalist in corporate media stood up and said, wait a minute, is this really our role? Is it our role now to act as law enforcement where we're going to... We're going to expose leakers to the public and ensure they go to prison. Isn't it supposed to be our role to work with leakers and encourage them to come forward and give us information about what the government is doing in secret that is the truth rather than what they're telling the public? Now, journalists play the role of hunting leakers and wanting to see people punished who disclose classified information. But evidently, that is... The, not just the role of the Washington Post, but the understanding of the role of almost everybody in corporate media because virtually nobody stood up and said, wait a minute, we shouldn't be doing this. this is That's very true. Case in point, his name is Julian Assange, locked up in the Belmarsh prison. And he did nothing wrong except be a good journalist. And the thing is, We've seen how whistleblowers, people who want to speak against the establishment, are treated, how they are abused. This should scare every single one of you. This should cause alarm bells a ringing. And I don't care what generation you're part of. 
I'm going to say this again. Look, I know I repeat words again. I know I repeat statements again, but it really needs to resonate with all of you. I don't care what generation you're part of, the color of your skin, who you worship, how you choose to live, but the thing is, or how you even vote. I don't even give a damn how you vote. I don't even care if you don't vote at all. But the fundamental issue of a free press, free speech, is inherently important to a democracy. And we lose that. Hell, everybody, everybody, everybody's going on that shopping block. Is this the beginning of the end or the end of the beginning? The fact that our media is doing this to whistleblowers who are shining a light on corruption. If that's the case, what is there left to do but to truly stand up and call out the system for what it is? See, the system wants you to be smart enough to run the machines and do your daily lives, get your Dunkin' Donuts, but dumb enough not to question anything. And that's an insult. Every single one of you should be enraged by this because the corporate media, Wall Street, the big banks, the two-party system, they don't like you, they don't think about you, and they don't respect you. This is, this is the opposite of our role. Everybody cheered the Washington Post and said, wow, this is an incredibly important and intrepid scoop that they got. Now... It wasn't the FBI who found that bread, where those breadcrumbs led first. It was instead the New York Times. They obviously felt annoyed that the Washington Post had scooped them, and they went one step further. They actually went and found the name of the leaker and announced it to the world and described how they, the proof that they had that he was actually the leaker. Now, I want to move on to this other video here, too. It's where... Um... Glenn Greenwald speaking to Tucker Carlson. Again, look, this is the only person in corporate media that's allowing to have dissenting voices from all sides of the political spectrum. We should all be concerned about this. I don't care. Hey, libertarian voters, Republican voters, progressive voters, Democrats, everybody, all of you. Ears open. Listen up. Keep your heads on a swivel. Because free speech is on the chopping block. Hell, it's not only on the chopping block. It's being sliced and diced and going to be served at you uh, at exorbitant costs. Amazing is the New York Times, the Washington Post, all the people who were at that Pentagon briefing today think the way the CIA and the Pentagon think. They hate this person. It was the New York Times and the Washington Post that did the FBI's work and found the leaker and led the FBI to him. They're demanding that he be punished. They're demanding that the government clamp down and keep things more and more secret. What kind of journalist would ever do that, would want to see a leaker exposed and punished and then demand that the government keep even more secrets? But that is what this, these, these media corporations are there to do. They love leaks when the CIA and Homeland Security tell them to leak. That's when they disseminate propaganda to the public, like they did during the Trump years when they leaked the transcript between Michael Flynn and Ambassador Kislyak, the most serious kind of leaking crime. The Washington Post did that. Nobody looked for that leaker. Nobody cared. Everybody cheered because it served the interests of the security state. But when it comes to transparency that undermines the agenda of these agencies and that proves to the American people what the truth is, it's amazing that these journalists are on the side of the government and will actually hunt down the leaker and demand that he be punished even more. And again, all of us should be aware of this. Again, you see the double standard. Everyone's cheering for the whistleblowers under a Trump administration, under a Democratic administration. Oh, my God. Hang them. Beat them with an inch of their lives. Make them bleed. Make their families suffer. I mean, come on, folks. This this is very, very, very concerning. And the thing is, we can thank that orange Cheeto jag off Trump for helping the establishment even further with, again, what happened in 2019 on April 11th to Julian Assange when he got pulled out of the Ecuadorian embassy. Big brain work there, Trump. Way to take your marching orders from the establishment or to be fooled by the establishment. I'll never forget when Trump was interviewed about that. And he does this. At the end of it, he says, some people made some right decisions, wrong decisions. And then he just folds his arms like this. You knew you screwed up there, buddy. You knew you screwed up there. I just don't understand how any journalist 
could collaborate in hiding the fact that we're in a direct hot war with Russia. Maybe well, the, again, Tucker, remember, wasn't too long ago where all of corporate media was in agreement, shaking their head. Yes, there are weapons of mass destruction in Iraq. Hey, folks, did we ever find those WMDs? Type one for yes, Kit. We found them and we're safe because freedom and freedom and liberty and liberty. That's why. Stop asking questions. Type two is like, no, man, there were no WMDs, man. What are you talking about? What are you smoking? Put some more whiskey in your coffee. Maybe you support that. Maybe you don't. But how could you hide something that significant, the most significant fact of our generation from the public? How could you do that? It, the only answer is that you don't actually have a journalistic mindset that you far more identify with your with your job as working for the government than working for the American people. If you look at the history of the most important journalism stories, it's exactly insiders like Danny Ellsberg sees that the government is lying to the American people about the war in Vietnam, saying we're winning when in reality, privately, they're saying we're losing. And he goes and he shows the, the, the American people the truth. Or Edward Snowden, who heard James Clapper, falsely deny the NSA was spying on American people. He had the evidence in his hand and he risked his security to show the truth. Same things WikiLeaks did. This is what you celebrate in journalism. Our journalists, meaning the media corporations, hate this because they actually work for their government. That is their true allegiance. And there it is, folks, the real truth of it. The establishment media takes its marching orders from the government and the government is owned by corporations wall street and big banks those same entities that control the media george carlin you're a tap dancing in your grave hell you got the whole broadway show happening there in your grave buddy you were right we didn't listen buddy you called it out i hope somebody picks up that freaking throw because georgie boy called it oh george carlin george 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 you were right about everything. And again, I want to pull up this tab here as well. Pentagon leaker charged. Individual named uh, Jack Texera uh, was charged with unauthorized removal, retention, transmission of classified national defense information. So there you go. That's what's happening. Going on here, I want to pull up these two tweets here from Glenn Greenwald as well. On the left, the Washington Post celebrated itself and heaping praise on its own bravery for co-winning the Pulitzer. That's that's how I, I'm, I'm being sarcastic when I say it. For its use of documents provided by Edward Snowden. On the right, the Washington Post editor is demanding Snowden to be prosecuted instead of being pardoned. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that. And now, off was his head. Democracy dies in darkness. Nah, democracy was dragged out in the middle of the night, tied up in the public square, called all the people to attend. As soon as the morning light reached, that chopped off its head. Glenn Greenwald also writes, corporate journalists went to the Pentagon today to angrily demand they find ways to clamp down on secrets and ensure that no more leaks can happen. One specifically demanded they monitor Discord. Congrats to the journalists for getting less transparency and more monitoring. So now, now, now you're going to have some know-it-all smug journalists from corporate media, you know, spying in on you. Trying to be like, hey, what's going on, everybody? I want to be down with the rebels. Ah, our establishment media has failed us. And we're ruled over by clowns, scumbags. The worst of the worst. If you're not angry, I don't know what to tell you.